in an answer form. Excuse me, Jack, I was told that the Egyptians were pagans. They weren't pagans? No, in fact, the word pagan is the problem. When you look up in any dictionary, you'll get to a poor definition of the word pagan. They usually identify pagan with anybody who is a non-Christian, a heathenist, a non-Muslim, a non-Jew. Mm -hmm. And that's not what the word means. You have to look into the Latin of the word, Middle English, from the late Latin, get the word paganus. Mm -hmm. And that word comes from country dweller or civilian, from pegas meaning country or rural or district. It has nothing whatsoever to do with a person's religious beliefs or practices. Mm -hmm. this, quite often in this country, in English, words are thrown around to confuse people. So immediately when somebody say, Egyptians worship statues or idols, and they'll show a bunch of dog-headed creatures and bull-headed creatures and bird-headed creatures, and immediately went out and say, see, that's paganism. And then when you start seeing descending doves on the cathedral walls or in the stained glass when you see Christ riding an ass and they'll identify that icon as a form of paganism. In the Judaic doctrine, they use the word goyim, which meant a Gentile, someone who was not a reader of the Tanakh or the Torah. And that translates again as a form of paganism to them. But it's the wrong meaning and has nothing whatsoever to do with the Bible. There's no, the Egyptians were not pagans other than the fact that they lived in the rural area, they lived in the deserts, they lived in, along the Nile, and that can apply to us down in Georgia, or us down in small cities, versus those living up in Atlanta, or up in New York, or in Chicago, or in California, in those, those cities of melting pots of evil like Sodom and Gomorrah, we were therefore, by the definition in the dictionary, be pagan, but it had nothing to do with our religious belief or uh, the doctrine or the practices under which we live. Okay? So paganism has nothing to do with animal worship? Paganism has nothing whatsoever to do with animal worship according to a dictionary and a definition. Right? But according to religious fanatics who want to stamp certain stereotypes on people because they can't explain certain facts. That you have to deal with when you go to the Bible, for instance, you have to deal with the fact that the word for Egypt is Mizraim. Right? And that word, can you trace that name out in Genesis from son to father, from son to father, from father to son, father to son, you're going to find, like I said earlier, that the Egyptians themselves are in fact of the blood of God. When you go, if you go from God or Elohim to Yahweh according to the Bible in Genesis, by the time you get down past Adam and Eve, and then you get down to that third son, Seth, and then from Seth, the next most prominent character becomes Enoch, and then the next most prominent character becomes Noah of the flood, and then the next most prominent character becomes Abraham. When you go between Abraham and Noah, and you end up in Genesis chapter 10, verse 6, and it says there, And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, and Foot and Canaan. When you get to that son, Mizraim, Mizraim to them was an Egyptian. Now, how about Ham? The Egyptians have a word called Ham, means black skin or dark people. Now, many people refer to ancient Egypt as Kemet. Many people refer to blacks in America in a derogatory way years ago as a cursed seed of Ham. Mm -hmm. They were saying blacks were cursed and the list became big, the head became nappy by the curse, and that's recognized out of Genesis 9.25. But you don't find it mentioning a curse on Ham. It says, curse be Canaan, which is a son of Ham. But now when you go into the Bible, you look again into uh, Psalms uh, 105. Can someone read that? 105 verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Right in that verse, you got that Israel came into Egypt. If you look into the Hebrew there, you find the word Mizraim. And then he said what? Read the verse again. Israel also came into Egypt. Mizraim. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So Ham and Mizraim are the same people. And that goes back to Genesis chapter 10, verse 6 again. And the sons of Ham are Cush. Cush is Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And Mizraim, Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Put, Libya. Mm -hmm. And Canaan. And Ham is right there. Ham is the father of this seed. So if Ham fathered the Egyptians, and Noah, who God chose as a family to survive the flood, who God said should be fruitful and multiply, and he's ready to earth again. Noah, who we learned the story of the ark and all the animals, God spoke directly to Noah, and Noah's son was Ham, and Ham fathered Mizraim, that puts the Mizraim or the Egyptians, and the Hamites, and the 
Cushites and the Ethiopians and the original Libyans, not the ones that's in Libya now who are Italians who invaded, but the dark-skinned, woolly-haired, original inhabitants of that land, that makes them the seed of God. That makes them the blood of God. That makes them when God said, I created man in my image and after my Genesis likeness. And we go back to Genesis chapter 2. We find the word Ethiopia inside there 13. as the place where God was said the best gold came out of. That saved these people, these Ethiopians, these Egyptians, these Muslimites, these Cushites, these Footites. These were all dark-skinned, woolly-haired people. These were Negro people. And they were the blood of God. Stay on the fact, look at the Bible, look into the Bible, look into the words of the Bible, look into it word by word, translate, get dictionaries, encyclopedias, go to the computer, get Logos Bible, online Bible, and look for yourself, and let the Bible speak to you, directly to you, so you're in communion with God yourself. And you won't have the problem of thinking those Egyptians were other than the Hebrews, or other than the Israelites. Because as we explained earlier, Hebrews was not a tribe or a race or a religion. Hebrew was an act. The man who found the Hebrew was called Abraham. His real name was Abram. It's in the Bible. His name was changed to Abraham. In Genesis 17:5. And he was a Chaldean. So they changed his name so you wouldn't trace it back to a Chaldean name. The Chaldean's language was a form of cuneiform. Cuneiform was a wedge script, a hieroglyphic script which they found in ancient Egypt first. When God took Adam and moved him eastward into the garden, he was moving him out of Africa and over into Asia, over into Jerusalem. So you say, Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Yes, because that's where you germinated your religious beliefs. But your seed originated in Africa. And the intellect of the world is founded in ancient Egypt. The Babylonian deity Tammuz that you find mentioned in the books of Ezekiel Eight, where the children of the women of Israel go out and pray and call on this Sumerian deity was a link directly to Anu and Anu from the Egyptian is Anu with two ends and it comes from Heliopolis, the city of the sun. So our acknowledgement and our sense of reality tells us that the deity we've been worshiping as the most high God, Ilion Ilion El, the most high or the highest is none other than Re or the sun, called Shemesh in ancient Babylon, called Re in ancient Egypt, and we say sun in Malachi, the sun of righteousness, that's you had, given warmth, given life, given vitality, the sustainer. That was the symbol that God represented as a circle in his eye, as the all-seeing eye who looks down over all humanity. The sun is not God. The sun is one of God's creations that represent the power of God. So the Egyptians are, in fact, if you read your Bible, of the same bloodline, nothing new. Not a new race, not a new tribe, not a new family, but of the direct line from Noah through that sun, Mizraim.